China is a victim of coronavirus disinformation, Chinese ambassador to Canada insists. 17th of May 2020, I am Rolly Adassa and it's 60 seconds Rolly Adassa. The world has numerous questions for the country of China, but the top on that list is China's role in the spread of the virus that is now eating up the rest of the world. Ever since the Chinese government alerted the world about the new coronavirus in January, fingers have been pointing. At first it was sympathy, the rest of the world empathized with China, wishing the country a speedy recovery from the virus that was killing its people. Hashtag pray for China was trending online. Then the virus started spreading abroad and the story changed. Countries started restricting travels to and from China and when the World Health Organization finally declared a global pandemic, experts started digging. Researchers and some US officials believe that China covered up the extent of the coronavirus outbreak and how contagious the disease is in order to stock up on medical supplies needed to respond to it. It is believed that the virus had started spreading as early as November 2019. In a matter of just six weeks, China imported nearly 2.5 billion pieces of personal protective equipment including over 2 billion masks. We found essentially a global covert operation in which China moved early to secure personal protective equipment for its hospitals while it was covering up the extent of the pandemic risk for the rest of the world. In January, when the Communist Party called upon millions of overseas Chinese to buy up PPE and ship it back to China, dozens of United Front groups sprung into action. And then we see in Vancouver, Toronto, Montreal, mobilization of community groups scouring retail stores, coming back to the airport with pallets of PPE and sending it to China. Several other theories have proven this to be true. First, it was a series of news about Chinese journalists and doctors who tried to alert the world but were threatened and silenced by the Chinese government. Second, it was a series of investigations that revealed how the Chinese government hid the actual data of infections and deaths in the country from the World Health Organization and the rest of the world. The President of the United States, Donald Trump, also speculated that China may have unleashed the coronavirus due to some horrible mistake. Some researchers said it was an intentional attack to cripple the rest of the world. That fueled a series of racist and xenophobic attack and discrimination against Asians and other countries. It was a tough time for the Chinese people living in foreign countries. Now. What did China say or do in all of this? Well, as expected, they tried to defend themselves. The Chinese government stifled all controversial information, increased its extremely tight control of information sharing within and outside its country, and focused on saving its country from the pandemic. After China reportedly defeated the virus, the government started pushing back all accusations on the United States, pointing to many missteps by the American officials in their approach towards combating the outbreak. The Chinese government accused the US government of ignoring the facts, diverting public attention, and engaging in book passing as an attempt to shift blames. People die from the flu. We have 12 cases, 11 cases. Typically, that will go away in April. We're in great shape, though. There is so much at stake right now guys with almost 5 million infections and roughly 310,000 global deaths. Someone has got to take the blame for it or maybe no one. Economies around the world are collapsing and it seems like the entire globe is in chaos except China. So while the rest of the world are struggling under the heavy weight of the pandemic, it's back to business as usual for China and this is only making the rest of the world wonder if the accusations against them are true. Several groups and countries have talked about suing the country because they believe that China lied and people died. That's a regular hashtag on Twitter these days and not just that, China must pay. <laughs> So guys, the tension between China and the rest of the world, especially the US, seems to be steadily rising right now. The US tried to teach China a lesson by expelling about 60 employees of 5 Chinese state media outlets working in the US and it backfired. The US gave the Communist Party of China the perfect excuse to get rid of American journalists in China who have been the major sources of information about what is really going on down there. Not just the US right now, China seems to have turned its fury on Canada too. There is the issue of the two Canadian nationals detained in China for more than a year in what is widely viewed as retaliation by China for Canada's arrest of a wise CFO in 2018. Even though she is currently living on bail in Canada, the two Canadian citizens 
have continued to be detained in Chinese prisons. A Chinese Canadian, Anastasia Lin, a vocal opponent of the Chinese Communist Party, has recently spoken up about how the Chinese government uses an organization tagged as the United Front to scare and threaten any Chinese or Chinese Canadian that speaks against its government. And the national security agent invite you to drink tea, it means that they're going to meet up with you, issue a vague threat. The way they operate is through fear and greed, the two worst things in human nature. They try to intimidate you. If it doesn't work, they try to buy you off. So when I said I want to advocate for human rights, I think the Chinese Communist Party took it more serious than I did. And they went to my father, who's still in China, to threaten him and told him that if I don't start to... Um, if I don't stop speaking, then my family will be persecuted, like in the Cultural Revolution. My father told me this, like, by a text message. So, that was, it's not like I didn't anticipate something like that, because I heard enough stories of that happening. But when it actually happened to me, it was a shock. Investigations also revealed that the United Front, with the full support of the Chinese government, is an agency scattered around the world, and its aim is to control what Chinese or non-Chinese nationals say about China and to also influence activities in those countries. The United Front is a tentacle of the Communist Party of China and operates both at home and abroad. According to Amnesty International, the operatives allegedly harass or threaten people of Chinese heritage living in Canada to turn on dissidents and shut down critics. According to security experts, these so-called spies are right here in Canada and are agents of China's Cold War with the West. The United Front Work Department, also just known as the United Front, dates back to the 1940s. Though under Chinese President Xi Jinping, the scope of the organization has massively expanded. United Front's Works Department is, to put it very simply, a political warfare operation, which tries to nullify opposition in uh, other countries and which tries to win the support from the elites in business, in politics, in academia, in media, in target countries. And Pretty well, all countries around the world these days are target countries. Over the past year, I found that some of the suspects in casino money laundering networks were associating openly with United Front group leaders, especially in Vancouver. And so we looked deeper into one of the organizations that was very key in the Canada PPE operations. And this group, at least one director, has a documented tie to persons accused of underground criminality. Oh my God, it feels like a real war out there, guys. And China seems to be catching in all the phone right now. In a recent interview with a Canadian journalist, China's ambassador to Canada has insisted that China is only a victim of coronavirus disinformation. It said that China is being victimized by a campaign of discrimination about its role in the spread of the coronavirus pandemic. According to experts, it makes sense that the country is trying to defend itself, but it doesn't make sense that it's trying to push the blames. Let's not forget guys, there was recent news of Africans being attacked and labeled as the source of the virus in some parts of China. Few African leaders spoke up, but no serious action was taken against the inhuman behavior. And guess what? All has gone strangely quiet in the last few weeks. No more news about what's going on down there and people are beginning to wonder what's really going on with Africans in China. Some experts have the opinion that countries should focus on trying to defeat the pandemic now rather than push blames but with all the recent news of activities of the Chinese government and Chinese nationals in foreign countries, do you think that China should be left off the hook? Please share your thoughts at the comment section guys. For more of this update, hit the subscribe button and turn on post notifications. Don't forget to like and share with your friends. 60 seconds with Rolly Adassa. See you on the next podcast.